Hi everybody, this is Jessica Lahore and I'm here with Ask a Lahore. This is my 21st Ask a Lahore and I'm very excited to have my special guest, Miss Felony Misdemeanor, formerly known as Prince, here on Ask a Lahore. We just got done with M Uptown's outra <laughs> outrageous drag queen bingo and we are going to answer your questions and see Miss Felony's opinion on those as well. So our first question is... <laughs> your eyes were wide open. I was like, how long is she going to go with this going on? I was like, oh, we'll see how it goes. Hey! Uh, <laughs> you kept that longer than I thought you were going to do. I was going to keep going. But I'm like, well, my eyes are kind of dry. <laughs> We had a really good time at M Uptown Drag Queen Bingo. Every Tuesday. It was Me and her. We're here the first Tuesday. She's here every single Tuesday at 9 o'clock. So make sure to make your reservations and come out because we have a good ass time here at M Uptown. The first question that I have is give us a list or let's just say your favorite must see show in Denver. My favorite must see show in Denver is anything that I'm in. What about the not that you're in? If you had to pick one show and you're like, okay, I'm going to take a break tonight. I'm not, I'm going to just go and I watch I don't a go show. out unless I'm in a show. But if you did. No. <laughs> but, if, but if you tried really hard. But if I tried really hard to go see a drag show, what must show, what must see show would I go see? For me, Hold on, I'm thinking. For me, it's Drag Nation. <laughs> okay. For me, even if I'm not in Drag Nation, I think that Drag Nation encompasses a production mm -hmm. in terms of dancing. It keeps me entertained. The performers are always top notch, and I think that they have the special guests. But I love seeing local girls more than the <laughs> professional girls. I love Drag Nation, but I'll be honest, I want to see the girls, not the dancers. I love the dancers. Okay. Love the dancers. Love you all. You're dope. But um, from when it the original The Roots, it was just about the drag queen. Oh, it was Drama Drag. So yeah. you went back to way when Drama Drag was going on, and that was... Drag Nation, only seven years old. Drama Drag went for how many years? <coughs> I don't know, but it was a while. And I was in every fucking show. Every show, every month, god damn it. By and yourself, worked, right? By myself. All the girls were by themselves, pretty much. So excluding the dancers, who would you, you, you appreciate... Drag Nation, but who, what, I do. what show would you go and see if you were just to go out and you're like stumbling upon a show, if you would want to go and see a show? If you weren't involved in it, if you were part of it. Is there a dick sucking? I mean, every show no, you're part kidding. of is dick sucking. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I'd say Drag Nation. Just because it's the biggest production Yeah, and kind of there's thing. a lot of girls that I would like to see, like the, the, the uh, celebrities. I, I do like to see them. Um, but, of course, the local girls, they're, they're dope. Well, and you know a lot of the celebrities as well because you've been in the drag scene for so long. Yes. So when you go time. and see them, you know them and you're saying yeah. hi. You're not just like a fan. You like you say hi and they know you too. That's yeah. a big deal about it's kinda it. Cool. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Okay. So Drag Nation is something to go and check out. What is your most embarrassing sexual moment? Well, I don't get embarrassed having sex. Who, who asked that? Everyone's I don't get embarrassed, wondering. but I have a gross story. What's a gross story? Tell us. Um, yeah, I've never got embarrassed, but I've had people that I got embarrassed. I've sucked some dude's dick, and he came before he even got hard. But that's not embarrassing for me. But uh, one time... That's a quick finish for yeah, you. That, that means was, you get was, to go to bed early that it night. It was so sad. <laughs> I was so glad because I was like, I just want to continue with my day. And, uh, <laughs> so you just got out of the way. I just want to continue with my day. But no, um, one time, uh, this gentleman, he gave me Wendy's Frosty. Like an actual Wendy's Frosty? Or no. is that like a sexual thing? As he had poo that come out of his butt. And it looked like Wendy's Frosty, and then it was all over his nuts and his taint area. And so it just looked at, like a pile. Yes, yeah, it's, it's gross. It looked like a pile of Wendy's Frosty just in my bed coming out of this boy's butt. And um, that was the quickest boner reducer ever. So I jumped out of bed so quick. So, I jumped so out of bed so quick, disgusting. and I threw something at him like, clean up. Get the. Clean on your, your bed? bed? Yeah, my bed. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. This yeah. is Daddy. Thanks for the food, Daddy. 
This is Valerie's food coming on in. Are you gonna feed it to me? Oh yeah, that's perfect. Come here. Oh my gosh. This is Daddy. Say hi, Daddy. Show us. Don't have a good stomach. I don't care. Let me suck your nipple. No. Well, he shit on my bed and on my dick, and I got so upset. I would throw up. I would get so. I didn't throw up. I have a good stomach, but I jumped. I threw a towel at him and. I jumped in the shower real quick. Oh. And he said, let me get in with you. I'm like, okay, no, well, you no, go home. no, he needed to clean it. Okay, I let him you clean You go home. Up. You clean yourself. But he oh. tried to do it again, rub his butt on my dick. And I was like, you know what? No. I'm kind of turned off from the shit no, that was there I'm, earlier. I'm afraid. There's, Sorry. There's still more stuff in there. And I don't want it. Well, my worst sexual moment, I was, this is like six years ago, <laughs> six years ago, I was playing drunk Super Smash Brothers, so like the video game, and every time you lost, you had to take a couple shots. Uh-huh. We got so drunk, and it was like one of the first times I ever bought them. You know like in horror movies, when you hear somebody scream like bloody murder violently? Mm-hmm. Imagine that happening to you while you're topping somebody. Over and over, and they're wow, asking. Wow, you're talking. Oh, God. Yeah, so at the, at the bottom, and I'm screaming bloody murder, like someone's stabbing no way, me. Okay. And they keep stopping, and they're like, are you okay? And you're okay. I'm like, yes, keep going. And I keep, keep screaming bloody that murder. That doesn't sound fun. Once we finished, I hysterically laughed like a clown, like, like, like what your normal laugh, but like constantly someone that's not used to it. And they were freaked the fuck out. And we, oh, yeah. we never saw each other again. We never slept together. That was like seven years ago. But it was the most embarrassing moment of my life that I, I screamed. That way he had roommates. Everything were asking him if he was okay. Uh-huh. And then in the morning, or when we finished, I was laughing. I couldn't stop laughing for like five minutes straight. That's fine. And then I passed out. And then I went home in the morning. And we never talked again. I do remember one time I did buy a, I had a bottle. One time. But one time. Um, it was a straight guy. Always a straight guy. Uh, outside his house, and he was in his basement, and but he had like a curved. It was like an angled ceiling under over his bed, and so I was right doing it, and he stood up real fast, bam, and hit his head as he was ejaculating. It was hilarious. Did he like pass out? Did he no, like hit his head? No, he like, oh, 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 oh. It was pain and pleasure at the same time. And you're just sitting there like. <laughs> I need a fork. I need to eat. We gotta get you a fork. This next question is, what would you change if you could change one thing about the drag community in Denver? I would make me the queen of all queens here in Denver, and I would put me in every fucking show, because, God damn it, I worked really hard. I don't know. I'm trying. Outside of you, what would you... <laughs> <laughs> Outside of you being you, what would you change one thing? I would be uh, fucking queen. <laughs> Oh, you bitches. Um, <laughs> that you're noticing, especially being a mentor in Ultimate Queen, like what a would you A lot of change? shows are being, are very similar. All the same cast kind of thing? Uh, well, it's not even the same cast, just all the girls are doing the same shit. It, girls, you're doing the same shit. Where, girls, you're doing the same fucking shit. And it's boring. If I had to change something, I would change the attitude about... Uh, up and coming queens so my biggest pet peeve right now is seeing queens on Facebook not critiquing their own makeup or their own costumes or anything and and thinking everything's flawless fierce on point bye leaving Jesus but flawless fierce on point the best of the best and and they express that so openly and confidently I think there's a difference between being confident and being cocky confident and cocky exactly well see that's Um, the thing a lot of new girls are and um, I don't know where they get it from. Well, I, I, I blame it on the age and, and uh, media and everything. A lot of people nowadays want the immediate satisfaction, the immediate gratis- gratification. And um, that Without is the working attitude. For it. Exactly. That is the attitude a lot of these young queens are, are taking on. And I mean, it's, they're a product of their environment, so I don't fault them. But they should have someone there to like hey bitch check yourself yeah no just hey bitch that's it and yada yada whatever but most of it was hey bitch kind of like you hey bitch kind of like taking a step back kind of like realizing yeah what you're like doing. hey bitch you ain't all that you're not Grace Jones <laughs> 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 I really need a fork 
We'll get you one. We got only two more questions, and then we can get you a No, I want to eat and I want to eat and you can eat and chat all the same time. When I eat. What was the first outfit you performed in? Ever in drag. Mine was like from Walmart. I had a Walmart booty short. I had a Walmart top. I think I got something from an airport in Chicago that I wore my first time I performed. Everything was like mall. Hmm. No, it's not bad. Um. No, I, I'm not hating because I wear my, a lot of my shit's like that too. Um. My first, I think it was, I did Janet Jackson, if. The first time you performed? My very first performance was Janet Jackson, if That's the Way Love Goes, performance from the MTV uh, Video Awards. Um, I tried to, I think I wore jeans and like a vest or something, just like Janet did, so very easy. And um, I think I wore sketcher boots. Um, yeah, it was my first drag performance. Was awesome. Did you learn the choreography and everything that you oh, yeah. wanted to? Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, you've always been that way, though. Ever since I've seen you, is that everything is the choreography of what you want it to be, or you have it choreographed, or you have it outlined as to what you want the dance to be. Yeah, I used to always. enter uh, talent shows in high school, so that's where it came from. Okay. But um, yeah, I did. It was all Janet, all Janet, all the time. And oh my God, thank you. I love you, David. You are- if you want to see David Velasquez, he works at Midtown Spa, and there's a jack-off shows every Thursday at 9 o'clock. <laughs> the, <laughs> everyone's like, plug. jack-off show? Jack-off show. Literally what it and sounds like. A guy goes exactly. on stage, does a stadium, sort of small stadium, and he dances, and then he jacks off for you. And you can either join him, or you can join the others, or you can watch. That's what I do. We have one more question left. Our last question is, what was your first gig in Denver? My first gig in Denver, I competed for uh, Miss Gay Colorado. It was in 2000. Like Pride of Colorado? or No, Miss Gay Colorado when there was the the USA. Um, Did they discontinue the pageant thing? They did. Okay, but they're trying to bring it back. Yes. Yes. So I competed for Miss Gay Colorado in February of 2004. Um, I competed against Tracy Edwards. Um, uh, may she rest in peace. She won, uh, but uh, I'm not gonna lie. She's she was my friend, but she shouldn't won this gown. Her, I'm not gonna lie. Her gown was not pretty. It was some Walmart material. She remembers everything. I remember everything. Yes, I do. And my gown was beaded, head to toe. Uh, it was my gown from Miss Gay, Texas, and Miss them Texas Bridges Don't Play. But uh, that was my very first. I did Aaliyah. She helped me. She gave me some hair. I had hair, but she gave me some better hair. And um, that's when I met a lot of people there that are my friends now to this day. That From that pageant? Mm-hmm. Oh, almost and That beautiful. was in 2004, right? Yeah, so she, that kind of opened a lot of doors to other gigs and opportunities? No, not at all. Not at all. No? Um, the show that opened the, um, or kicked the door in was um, at Dazzle Restaurant Jazz Club uh, when Nicole Summers was doing her annual AIDS project or ra- uh, AIDS fundraiser. And um, she wanted to do it at Dazzle. And my one of my best friends, um, one of my great friends, Matt Ruff, is the manager there. And so they talked. Is that bar and, still around now? Oh, yeah, still there on 10th and Lincoln. And um, he said, well, if you want to do the show there, you know, to put my friend Felony in it. And she's like, okay. So I was introduced to Nicole. I did the show and all of the, the And you got this girls. kind of opening this chance right yes. there. And that opened the door to other that shows was, and opportunities. Exactly. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's really awesome. Mm-hmm. I, I remember everything, all, all the good things that were given to me, handed to me, all the good opportunities, all the bad opportunities. Um, it's, it's, it's good to remember that shit to keep yourself you know, balanced and humble, humble, and you know, you don't remember wanna... where you started, exactly. who you started with, that mm. you're not all that, but where did you start, and how long did it take you to get there? Exactly. Who gave you chances? Exactly. Um, my first show in Denver, I remember doing a benefit. I messaged uh, Kirk. Do you remember? Do you know Kirk? Kirk um, Bottom? Yes. Uh-huh. Bald, beard, otter. Okay, no. 
<laughs> Sorry, Kurt. If you're he was doing. He's with um, <laughs> the Kirk. Bond. Kirk, this Kirk. No, other Kirk. Um, he was doing a fundraiser, and I messaged him. I was like, I'd really like to be part of it. He he didn't know me. I said, I don't. I'll donate everything that you want because it was a fundraiser. That was my first like gig in Denver. Mm-hmm. Following that, I did Bitchcraft. But my mm-hmm. first opening was your show, and I've told you this before that I messaged Felony for probably four or five months straight every single month asking to be in cell block i don't know anything about her she knew nothing about me and she'd say sorry no girl but she responded she'd be like sorry no girl send me a video but i didn't have videos sorry no girl like whatever finally it got to a point where janet jackson was the first show that you let me be part of imagine i'm a white girl trying to do janet jackson it did it's exactly what it sounds it was my initiation um, I, I, I failed at it. It's on my YouTube mm. channel. I absolutely she failed at it. She did awesome. I loved it. No. I welcomed her back, so she no. did great. I, I got to come back, but it was not the best. I got to do Janet again later on. But she was more like Zunit. <laughs> I was she Miley was, Cyrus trying to, to whip a ponytail around. She was Zunit. <laughs> <laughs> but it right. was your show that brought a lot of respect and opportunities for me to expand into other shows that people started knowing that you allowed me to come back or at least be part of your show and and get into other gigs so that was a big part of that um but it took five it took it took a while it took a while but it was worth it no that's fine that just shows exactly what um, what we've been talking about this whole time is that you can't get it right away you have to work for it you have to bug people respectfully you have to to show that you're worth or willing to do whatever Mm -hmm. um especially with her shows and she throws thousands and this of bitch her is balls. awesome. I think I predict her to be the next best drag queen in Denver in 2017. Thank you for watching. We answered all of your questions. You can find me on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram at the underscore L dot whore. You can find Felony on Instagram at what? 303 On Instagram? Mm-hmm. Really? Nope, that's my number. I was going to say, people are going to be fucking calling you. Oh, send me dick pictures. <laughs> What's your Instagram? I'm not really sure. I think it's felony, misdemeanor. Search, <laughs> right, let me look. search felony. Search felony. Oh, you, can find, you can find both of us on Facebook. Uh, felony, misdemeanor on Facebook. You can find felony's cafeteria on Facebook when she used to objectify food. I need to start food. doing that again. You really do. Um, you can find me on Facebook. You can find my like page. And did you find it? Do you know what it is? No, I don't know how to use this. Anyway, thank I'm you old. so much, Felony, for coming I'm on to old. Ask a Lahore. And thank you for having me. Yeah, we'll Want see you next chicken? time. Yeah, feed me some chicken. Bye, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Caramel chicken.